Cristiano Ronaldo is one of the most valuable footballers on the planet. His talent is mesmerizing. He's really, really good technically. He's really fast. He's an athlete, a complete athlete. Cristiano Ronaldo is one of the best players in the world. But what is it that gives Ronaldo the edge over other players? To find out, he's come to this specially created state-of-the-art laboratory in Madrid. Here, in a world exclusive, sports science experts are going to forensically analyze what makes him such an efficient machine. Ronaldo will submit to an array of tests, each one designed to investigate a different strength in his game. It's amazing to see how my body works, so it's a fun, fun day. The results are revealing and often surprising as Cristiano Ronaldo is tested to the limit. In this sports laboratory, Cristiano Ronaldo is about to undergo a series of challenges unlike any he's done before. He'll undergo tests for body strength, mental ability, technique, and finally skill. Guiding him through this is football consultant Andy Ansar. He's teamed up with leading sports scientists, hoping to uncover the secrets behind Ronaldo's tremendous ability. Shall we stretch out properly? The first of the four challenges is one of the most crucial on a football pitch. Body strength. With 40 goals in a single season, Ronaldo is La Liga's highest scoring player ever. One of the fastest men on the pitch, his lower body strength gives him the acceleration to get that hair's breadth nearer the ball. And in today's game, every millimetre counts. To test Ronaldo's sprinting ability, Andy has developed a two-part challenge. First, a straight sprint over 25 meters. Then, a 25 meter zigzag sprint, designed to measure speed and agility. To draw a comparison, Ronaldo is going to race against professional sprinter Angel David Rodriguez. Rodriguez is the Spanish champion over 100 meters, but how will he compare with Ronaldo over 25 meters? Infrared beam timing gates will give split-second results. And in charge of the test is biomechanics expert Neil Smith. We want to see the different muscles and the different components that are used in order to find out who's quicker, a sprinter or a footballer. Rodriguez is going to go first. Take your marks. Set. How do we do, Neil? Angel hit 3.31 seconds only. Angel, really? quality. Different class. It's fast. What do you think Ronaldo will do? Maybe the same, strong, athletic. You sure? Yeah, I know. Slow motion replays reveal that Rodriguez makes a strong, explosive start, reaching top speed in under half the distance. All his movements are in a straight line, very linear. Nothing from side to side at all. Everything is moving in front to back directions. No energy is wasted. Rodriguez has a high knee action. This gives him a very long stride length of 2.5 meters. Ronaldo's target to beat is 3.31 seconds. Let's see what he's got. <laughs> Come in, buddy. Let's get Ronaldo on the blocks. OK, Neil. Set. Angel, come and join us. What was Ronaldo's time? He's done well, Andy. He's got 3.61 seconds. And what was Angel's time? Angel clocked in at 3.31. So that's 0.3 seconds. 0.3 difference. Absolutely quality. Mm -hmm. Different class. Considering Angel's oh, class is sprinter, <laughs> that's not bad at all. So Ronaldo narrowly lost the straight sprint. On closer analysis, the reasons why are clear. From a sprinter's point of view, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo's technique 
isn't the best, um, but then Cristiano Ronaldo's not a sprinter. He's very quick off the mark, but his style is quite different. He has to still think about the sprint in. That's where his head goes back. And <laughs> if you go like this with your arms, the chances are behind you, your legs will be doing that also. And that means lower knee height. Because of his usual increase in speed and decrease in speed during a game of soccer, his stride length is quite short and quite sharp, quite staccato, and only covers 1.7 metres per stride. In a 90-minute match, Ronaldo will usually cover over 10 kilometres, but very little of that is in straight-line sprints. In football, the ability to abruptly change direction is vital, so the zigzag course is designed to replicate what happens in a game. How well do you think you'll do on the zigzag? Me? Yeah. <laughs> he kicks me. <laughs> let's, let's go and do our thing. Come on, guys, let's give it a go. Take your marks. Get set. Go. Rodriguez is still very fast around this course. He navigates the poles well, keeping his balance even when his body is almost at 45 degrees at some points. Rodriguez completes the zigzag course in 6.86 seconds. So, Ronaldo, 6 point... 6.86 to beat. What do you think? Well, because this is my, my type of work, I use more this in the game than run in straight line. So, this is my, more my profile, my style. Perfect. Let's get him set. OK. Good man. Take your marks. Get set. Go! Ronaldo's style again has very little in common with the sprinters. Okay, Angel, come and join us. So, first of all, Neil, remind us of Angel's score. Angel came in at 6.86 seconds. 6.86, and then Ronaldo's? 6.35. So, what's the difference there? Almost half a second there, Andy. Almost half a Superb. second. Superb. Superb. Exactly what we were expecting from our footballer, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, what we're hoping there, you can see a very big difference between the straight line sprinting. We've got very long strides, nice high centre of gravity. Cristiano comes into his own here. Yep. We lower the centre of gravity. We enable ourselves to push off and accelerate sidewards. That centre of gravity nice and low. The knees are bent, the hips are bent, and the muscles are hopefully working at their optimum length. Because this is my, my style, you know, I, I use this a lot in the a, in a pitch, so... I guess that I'm um, more chances in this type of run, that straight line. Without a shadow of that, improved it. When we look at the zigzag movements, we can see a way that Cristiano anticipates the change of direction coming into play. As Cristiano approaches, we see a lot of shorter steps. This is in stark contrast to what we see from Angel. To change direction, he does something that probably most people wouldn't. They would almost drop down to the ground to change movement. Cristiano Ronaldo almost goes upright, goes taller. Oh, look, he jumps into it with two feet this turn. Here we go. Yeah. There we go, there. Yeah, we can see Angel using one foot there to break in, yep. one st in one particular stride and to try and push off in the very next. Cristiano's decelerating using both feet, yep. places his centre of gravity inside the line of his foot, yep. and away he goes. It's almost like he uses one foot primarily yeah. for taking the braking force, as we see that inside yeah. foot there. Then the outside foot is more for the acceleration yeah. force. And Cristiano places approximately five body weights worth of force through that outside foot towards the next turn. So, in, in what we're seeing now is he's multi-talented, that, that's a given anyway with Cristiano Ronaldo, but the way his body works and the way it's built and all the different components that he uses when sprinting affords him the ability to maybe perform in terms of an athletic sprint at the very, high, very, very highest level. Yeah, he's up there. We've seen his speed is up there. We've seen the movement and the agility is up there. He can change direction quickly, he can accelerate and decelerate whilst he's still concentrating on the game. Ronaldo won by quite a margin. His time over the zigzag sprint was 6.35 seconds. 
Clearly, his ability to corner at speed gives him an advantage. And fundamental to this is muscle strength. So before the next test, Ronaldo's muscles are going to be measured to see if there's anything unusual. OK, Ronaldo, this is Luis. Hi. So we want to look at your body. We want to check everything out. What makes Ronaldo special? OK? OK. This is a state-of-the-art precision 3D body scanner. It uses a laser beam to create a visual profile of the exterior body shape and gives us exact measurements like height, 185.1 centimetres, chest, 109. Ronaldo has extremely lean, well-defined musculature. He has 3% less body fat than a supermodel. His thigh circumference is 61.7 centimetres, which is well above average. But his calf muscles are less developed, and the scan exposes a fact about their size that surprises Ronaldo. <laughs> Having uneven calf muscles hasn't held Ronaldo back. In fact, his body dimensions are part of the secret to his success. He has the long legs of a sprinter, the lean physique of a middle distance runner, and the powerful thighs of a high jumper. What sets him apart is that he has all those attributes in one body. Like tuning an engine for high performance, Ronaldo has tuned up his body strength significantly over recent years. He's increased his win rate in the air from 40% to over 66%. He can now fly higher than many of his opponents. So next, Ronaldo's explosive jumping ability is going to be tested. Here we are. OK, Ronaldo, this is the high jump. Now explain to us how this works. What we're going to get you to do is a test of lower body power. The higher you jump, the more powerful your legs are going to be. Mm. So we're going to place you on the mat. We're going to instruct you to jump as high as possible, give it your maximal effort, and try and land back on the mat again. This mat is actually a very sensitive pressure sensor that measures takeoff force. And the key thing is having his hands on his hips, correct? We're going to try not to use the arms as an extra okay. counterbalance. So that's why we do this, so that he can't use his arms as yeah. elevation. So it's we're just about to the legs. Concentrate just on explosive okay. power. Okay. Three, two, one. The result is surprising. Ronaldo jumps only 44 centimetres, barely average, with a force of just one and a half times his body weight. Something's wrong. So now, this is the thing. You don't jump like that in a game. Yeah. We have to make it relevant to football. Of course, if you jump with three hands, yeah. it's better. You jump yeah, more yeah. than... Yeah, you're quite limited. So can you also register that? If I get Ronaldo to jump if he comes in and jumps up off one foot and lands... We'll get the impact of the pressure as he hits the okay. pressure plate. Three, Let's two. try that. Let's try that. Three, two, one, go. Now the results are very different. Ronaldo's body strength enables him to jump 78 centimetres, which is higher than the average NBA basketball player can jump. His takeoff force is almost five times his body weight, or five Gs, the same as an astronaut goes through at takeoff. But what's more intriguing is what he does in the air. When he jumps high, he tucks his knees and his legs up behind under his buttocks. This has the effect of raising the centre of gravity temporarily, but it enables him to give this impression of hanging in the air, ready for him heading the ball into the goal. Excellent. Good, good, good. Awesome, Ronaldo. Let's move on to our next test. Very hard because you you have to give 100% everything that uh, you involve. Ronaldo's muscle distribution and raw body strength contribute significantly to his ability. But the next set of tests will reveal how important his mental ability is to his game, and the results are truly stunning. <laughs> 